you. Thanks very much for agreeing to this interview with Tia Mysores. Our first question is, before Magnus was cast, you were very insistent on an Asian actor. I still remember your, Lon um, your London signing last year. Um, are there any requirements for the actors in City of Ashes, and are there scenes that absolutely have to be in the film? Well, I can certainly say what you know, my particular requirements are, though, you know, at the end of the day, I don't control the total content of the movie, but I think that, you know, obviously, for the casting of Maya, Maya in the books is biracial, she's half African American and half white, and so hopefully they would find either a biracial or a black actress to play her. And for uh, Raphael, Raphael's Hispanic, so, you know, I would want a Hispanic actor to play him. Beyond that, I don't have really. Um, you know, strict, you know, guidelines for the casting of the other characters, and uh, I'm interested to see who they, who they approach, and uh, scenes that I'd really like to stay in, um, I really love, <laughs> I love the scene where um, Simon bites Jay, Simon yeah. Yeah. that's such a great yes. scene for their relationship, because Simon. it's the first time they sat in right, it is, it's a little bit of a racist scene, it. but it's the first time they really are, uh, Clinging together, locked in an embrace. Clinging together, locked in the bottom of the boat. That's the first and only time that that ever happens. But it's the first time that, that Jay's really prioritized his assignment. Um, as someone who's important to Claire and someone who's important in general. So I really would have, I wouldn't, I hope that they don't, you know, in any fit of uh, homosexual panic. That seems like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's great. It would also be lovely to see Alec and Magnus on the truck, and of course the CD Oh, of course! Yeah. I should have uh, I should have mentioned that. Um, I, I'm, I'm just not concerned because I know that the, the screenwriters really invested in Alec and Magnus' yeah. relationship, so Great. I feel like it'll be there. But I really do want to see the scene on the you know on the truck where yeah. you know Alex says, you know, take my hands and mm. take my strength. Yeah. Uh, so I really hope that makes it. That would be great. So um, the ending of Purple Princess was bittersweet and surprising because not many characters died. And you said that there are worse things than death. Will worse things than death happen to the Mortal Instruments characters, or will they be, or will they be truly dead? And what awaits the characters in general? Oh, I think that um, there's a certain bittersweetness about Clark Princess that is very different from a City of Heavenly Fire because Clark Princess deals with my, a main character who's immortal, and I find in writing about characters who don't die mm. and live forever that there is an innate tragedy, I mean, Schopenhauer said that immortality is the perpetuation of a great mistake. Yeah. And so I feel like, you know, there's this great mistake and it sort of is a bit of a curse that afflicts Tessa, that afflicts Magnus, and, you know, um, the people that they love, they're going to lose. Yeah. And so that really was what the end of Clockwork Princess was about. I mean, there were, we, we lost Jackson, which was, was sad. Um, yes. but, and it was one of those uh, situations where people would always ask me, is Will then die? And I thought, well, yeah, I mean, he does, he dies in the book, he dies on the page. But if I say yes, you're going to think that I mean something completely different yeah. than what I mean, because while Will dies and we see him die, he lives a completely full life, and he dies when he was 80 years old or something I like that. I was hoping. But, right, 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 but it is sad. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a difficult question to answer, and I felt like it wasn't one that could be answered without reading the book. Yeah. And, I feel like you see Heavenly Fire because the characters are immortal, it's much more immediate, you know, their loss is immediate, their experiences are immediate, and so I think that it's sad. There are some, you know, certainly some losses because there's a war, it's going to be, I think, affecting in a different way. Okay. So you're not gonna skip forward and have uh, Jess die at the age of eighty in Carrie's arms. Well she's like, Well this is sad and I'm very old, but on the other hand, there are shadow hunters in space now. Yeah. <laughs> When Jace was eight, it would be like 2090, and Claire would be like, well, the, the robot overlords who rule our world are very sad about your death. It's like, I don't want to write science fiction, so we're not going to go that far ahead. Shadow in space. Yeah, Sarah's very keen on Shadow in space. I'm not. It was a big part of the push for it. It was not happening. <laughs> okay. Um, the Shadow Hunters Codex will be released on October the 29th, and you work together with your husband. Yeah, well, yes, there. Yeah, right there. Come here for a moment. Yes. 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 Or you can come sit here while you two discuss working together right. marital harmony. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's actually great that we get to ask him in this interview. Right. <laughs> oh, is Jamie down? Yeah, he's Jamie's here, so I'm afraid I'm going to have to cut it short. Okay. 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 So, two minutes? Two minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, the Shadowhunts Codex will be released on October the 29th, and we work together. Mm -hmm. And do you know? Or do you know as much about the Shadow World than Cassie? And what will we be? Will, what will we read in the codex? Um, well, 
Well, I know as much as you about the shadow world. You know more about some things. <laughs> well, yeah, you know about things that haven't happened yet, they haven't written yet. Um, I know a lot now. I went when I uh, the way this process started was that I took copies of all of the books and I spent about a month uh, just putting post-it flags in them, just flagging everything that was interesting from the books that were sort of world-building things. Um, and they were color coded, I think it was. And they were color coded. Green for mythology, very green for monsters, elaborate. purple for weapons, wow. you know. Yeah, it got very elaborate. Um, but I guess what I would, uh, what you should expect to see is um, uh, a lot of organized information that you will know from the books, um, things that are not actually in the books and are just sort of extra information that doesn't show up because it isn't relevant to the main characters. Uh, a lot of uh, really beautiful art. Uh, I'm really right. very excited about the illustrations. Um, and uh, and um, quite a lot of handwritten notes from yeah, a few of our Mortal Instruments characters together. It's marking to up the... Clary's copy of her codex, and so it's got her comments. And so she and has comments, drawn all comments, over it, and written all, all over them. it, and Simon may have gotten his hands on it. <laughs> once or twice. Once or twice, uh, <laughs> and may have written on it a little bit too, and certainly Jace has marked it up a little bit. So, it's very cute. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Now the last question, because we're running out of time. You've sold over 23 million copies all over the world, and if you had the chance to go back to the point before you started writing City of Bones, what would you tell your younger self, and would you tell her to do anything differently? Oh goodness, I mean, I'm sure that I would tell myself to change little things and correct little things, and that kind of thing, stuff. But I think I would, you know, I would, I would, I would tell myself, you know, to, um, I think that we writers, we have a bad habit of whenever we, you know, think about, a, a, we open the book, we see a problem, whenever we hear something negative about the book, that's what we focus on. I would try to tell myself that, you know, for every bad thing you'll hear, you'll hear, you know, 300 wonderful things yeah. from fantastic people like you guys and the people on Tumblr, and not to um, only remember the, the things that are bad, but to, you know, take the time to appreciate the things that are good. Yes. That'd be my advice to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great advice. So, thank you very much for this interview. I'm sorry to have to run, but um, we have to run through what we're going to do on stage.